I spoke to four privileged brains of football, and I wanted to share that conversation with you. Stuart Abueva, who is the uh, sporting director of Norwich uh, at the, in the Premier League. Carlos Carvajal, the manager of Rio Ave in Portugal. Uh, Pep Clotet, manager of Birmingham City in the Championship. I wanted to see how this outbreak of the coronavirus uh, has affected their private lives, but also their professional lives, how they are reacting to it, all of them positive people, how they are adapting to self-isolation that the four of them are right at, at this point. We're going to hear from Carlos as well uh, what has been done with the players and what they expected them to do in the next few weeks. But you have the bigger picture, Stuart. You, you have to deal with, uh, with club. And as you said, uh, I hadn't heard of this before. You, you are making those calls uh, regularly, I suppose. And what else are you are, are you doing to keep the whole thing together? Yeah, so uh, what we've done, well, first of all, we've said to the staff who are directly with the players, you know, physios, sports scientists, um, to take a bit of time to actually rest um, because obviously we may end up uh, playing right through the summer, June, July, August and, and into next season. So we said also they need to take some time to recover a little bit. Um, but then... After that, let's say in a week or so, um, it's about them working on projects for, you know, the type of things that you do in the summer in terms of planning next season, uh, what's our recruitment plan, and uh, it's an opportunity to watch a lot of players. We're working on a strategy at the moment in South America, so this gives loads of opportunity to, to work on that via video, obviously. Uh, but then also in terms of reviewing this season and, and what we've learned so far, obviously we might still have games to play but what we've learned so far and, and the lessons we need to take from that so the good thing with technology now we can uh, have Skype calls like this uh, we can have conference calls where you know we can have the head of performance the head of medical the head coach uh, the head of scouting all together um, and discussing um, and one good thing at a time like this is there is that time to do that there's there's no excuse um, you know there's not a game that you need to get to or a training session that the guys need to get to it's they're literally sat in their home. So uh, we've tried to find ways to to really sort of maximise this opportunity. So, yeah, for sure, it's a world problem, but it's also a world opportunity to, um, in our case, connect a little bit with our fans, uh, but also to get really stuck into some projects, which, um, if we're honest, is very hard when the season's in full flow to, to get full attention to. Most of your work is through talking and phone and uh, and especially just before the windows open it's all about negotiating all that can be done for long distance so you feel that uh, you're missing a lot of, of your work no like you say the agents uh, ring whether there's a world crisis or there isn't they, they don't seem to mind um, so that, that hasn't changed too much um, I think it's just a connection I think it's what we all miss whatever we do it's as much as you can speak on the phone and email and stuff, it's it's seeing people every day. And sometimes you take for granted what, driving into a training ground early in the morning and, and seeing your, your colleagues and having a chat with the grounds on about the pitch and all the way through to the head coach about what he's thinking for the weekend. I think you, you take these conversations for granted um, until you don't have them um, and, then, and then you miss them. So I think keeping that connection is um, pretty difficult. Um, but, you know, again, it's sent to test us, at least in this day and age, we've got the technology where we can still connect. You know, imagine this was happening, I don't know, 60 years ago, you know, crikey, that would have been uh, horrendous. Carlos, you realised very early on what was happening or you acted upon what was happening. So what was your first, um, your first decisions related to the team? We we uh, we have information before uh, something happened here in Portugal. Uh, I'm talking about our club, not just my work club. I think the special the doctors they have a group uh, each other, uh, all the clubs in Portugal. They start talking about something that will be uh, very very bad to to us, but probably with informations from Italy in that moment. So uh, soon, I believe almost two weeks before the government starts giving a, a red light about, about the situation or the first case. Uh, in our club, and I believe all the clubs in Portugal, we start using some, some procedures about, uh, about the situation. So we don't touch each other. Uh, we have um, uh, care about when we open a door and so on. So we start, we, we, 
we we was with the, all the open doors to don't use the uh, open and close the doors and so on so we don't touch each other even we have two games uh, i remember the game in porto that we play in porto and uh, the players also each other they don't uh, and the referee don't they don't touch before the game and after the game the same so we have some some uh, some um, advertise about this situation. So when the, the things um, uh, it was happening, uh, I believe that me and my players, I'm talking about my club. I believe all the clubs in Portugal. We was more ready than the, the people in general because we have this kind of information. So uh, when the league dis- decided to 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 close everything was in the in the in the, in the another week. We have we had game on Friday and we didn't play. It was in Thursday. So after this, our plan was uh, in two in two ways. First of all, uh, we wait one week, but the short plan was to put the nutritionist and special the the head of the performance in in the contact with the players uh, to do all the basic that they usually that kind of work they 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 do before the trainings to prevent injuries and so on. And the, the nutritionist also start uh, working in the first day. So during the week. I give the players in peace because uh, I know, and all of us we know that will be very tough to 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 restart again the season. It will be very very tough. So we don't believe that will be in three or four or one month, and probably more than two months uh, to restart the season. So uh, after this, after one week, so last Friday, um, we start uh, pushing the players to um, do some trainings. So. Uh, we have a program to them, to all of them, individual. Um, some of them have opportunity to, because they have, for example, I have a house here, it's common in Portal. In Spain, I believe it's the same. In England also, but the, the gardens is more short, uh, especially in the cities. But uh, I have a good garden here. If I want to do a training to myself here, I can do a training because I have a space here. So most of the players have this kind of opportunity to move inside the house, but uh, in, in, the, in the garden. So we are... Uh, in contact with them all the days, with all the players. We know exactly what they are doing because we have the watches also. And we, we ask them to tape some of the training, especially the kids, uh, the sons of them. They are joking, but they are taping the, uh, taping the training. So we have uh, the things in this kind of control. But we are people from football and we know. This is general condition. This is not specific condition. So to play football is not this kind of work that they are doing, even in the parks, even running or something. This is not proper to football because, uh, you know, uh, this is football is, is a specific sport, of course. You can be uh, with uh, the best uh, or the, the best player of NBA uh, and bring him to play football. After five, ten minutes, you will you'll be there. It, to, to, say, to try to explain what? The specific movements in football, you must play football. You must, the intensity, the anticipation, the coordination with your colleagues. This is exactly what we need to recover, uh, to, to, to act and to play football in the future. So we can minimize this impact, try to do general condition. Uh, okay, it's better than nothing, but we know that when we recover, or when we will restart the season, if we will restart the season, we will need in the minimum two or three weeks, uh, minimum two or three weeks to put the players in the minimum conditions to play football, in my opinion. Pep, do you also agree that uh, the difficulties that you're facing now means that it will be like starting over, whatever time it is that you're going to start the season? And would your position be, should we start the season from scratch or not? Uh, I 100% agree with Carlos because... This stop that we have, obviously, is going to have an effect of the condition in the players and the general work that they will do. It, it will actually be very beneficial because it's general work that you can build up afterwards when, when you come more into the specific work. But I do agree with him because we will require specific work back to to condition the players into what's specific of the game, of the football, and and then maximize this period that's got to be general. For for the players, for the player body, really, it's a, it's happening the same as in a holiday period when they, they condition and they, they have to condition again. So, and and as in any pre-season, you will require general work. That is what the players are doing now by themselves going into a specific work and that will require as carlos said a minimum i agree a minimum of three weeks and that's basically no way around it we will have to do it all of us mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you mentioned Lorenzo Sanz, who is, uh, of course, the former president of Real Madrid, under which uh, Real Madrid won the uh, uh, European Comte Champions League twice, who died as a consequence of the coronavirus uh, uh, well, infection. And as you said, uh, with uh, a lot of family uh, members who have belonged to football, and he's received a lot of messages from everybody, uh, because he has been perhaps the first big shock to the system that this is real and this happens to uh, can happen to all of us. Uh, as a consequence, football will change, has to change, uh, in terms of um, the calendar, for instance. Stuart, what, is the, uh, what are you hearing from, uh, from the Premier League and what is expected from you to prepare for, for what's coming next? You want, like the Premier League are saying, you, you, you're part of a majority group, if not unanimous, that uh, want the, uh, the league to finish. Yeah, for sure. The first objective has to be to, to try to finish the league. Um, and I think as we sit here in March, that's a sensible action. Um, I think it'd be too early now to be making rash decisions about about the season. Um, but also we have to be realistic and we have to be thinking of plans and ways to, to get around it if, uh, if we can't finish the season. But um, certainly at the moment, the 20 clubs and the, and the Premier League, uh, the first objective is how do we finish the season? How do we get football back uh, for the people? You know, because it's probably times like this that uh, people realise, as in the supporters and, and the greater community, that of how important football is from a social aspect. Um, and people, you know, being bored and, and wanting to have some hope. And I think football uh, can give hope. Um, but yeah, for sure, it's difficult because it's one thing saying that. It's another thing then expecting players, uh, staff, to put themselves in a situation where maybe they're not safe and we, we can't do that, not for the sake of trying to, to finish a league or trying to make sure certain monies comes in or whatever, you know, health and, and people are, are more important than that. But I think the first objective has to be to try and achieve that. There'll be people a lot cleverer than myself trying to work out the permutations of if that's not possible. But um, at this stage, I think we all have to work to try and finish it but also have a real understanding that, you know, our players, the, these athletes, they need time to prepare. And, and let's be honest, if we are going to finish the season, it's going to be a lot of games in a short space of time. And these these players, they're not animals. They're not machines. We can't just chuck them in and say, go and perform um, without serious risk of injury. We have to be able to prepare them properly for that. Uh, we have to respect the players for that uh, and you know, respect that they're elite athletes and not just ask them to perform if the conditions aren't right. That's, uh, we can't, we have to avoid that. Would you play behind closed doors, Stuart? I think it'd be a real shame. Um, I think if, if we're told we have to, of course, we'll have to, but I don't think any player or, or staff or anyone involved in football wants to, the thought of playing behind closed doors is, is horrible because, you know, whenever I spoke to our players about this recently, their first response is, "Yeah, but we play, we play football for the, for the people. So who are we playing it for if we're if we're behind closed doors in a training ground or an empty stadium? Yeah, okay, two billion people can watch it on television maybe, but it'd be interesting to see how long they watch it for when there is no supporters there and there's no atmosphere and an element of the passion and and." Everything else which comes with football is is taken out of it the minute you don't play behind um, when you don't play in front of a crowd. That's just a fact. You see any game, even these European ones, sometimes when supporters are banned. I've been to a couple before where it's like, yeah, it's a serious game, but it's, it's, it is does feel completely different. I heard you. I, say, I saw you nodding Carlos away when the, when Stuart was talking about the necessity to prepare the players, as you insisted earlier, but also when he was talking about. Playing behind the closed doors will be very strange. Uh, are you prepared for it? Uh, do you think that uh, football people, the coaches, the managers, are being heard when uh, these things are discussed? Uh, yes, but it's uh, you know football. I, I was starting to see the um, the English game in Netflix. You know that um, I, I see this. I, I was looking this area, the number one and number two episode and um, is when does the, the football start and we we saw since the beginning of the football and still in this moment that even we are talking too much about business and money but the football is to the people so the foot the football belongs to the people the day that the football don't belongs to the people 
um, it will be something very strange and will be not the same. To play a game without the fans uh, is is nothing. I must tell you, you don't have soul in the, in the football. You are playing to the uh, to the media. To, you are playing to the TVs. So it's something completely different. If it will be necessary to f to finish the season, of, of course we must do it. We must do that, and we must be ready to do that. But there are one thing very important: that if the fans, this is my question, if the fans can go to the stadium because can be infected each other. Uh, the players can be infected uh, between them, between the opposite, referees, uh, the TV cameras, the people around the football, the staff. There are a lot of people around the football team. And these kind of things um, can happen. So we'll take the responsibility about that if a player be infected during the game, if a club have four or five players infected. So uh, this is uh, the questions that we must put when we... We will restart the season, if we will restart the season, because I have some doubts about that. But if we will restart the season, there are a lot of questions that the pe people must put in, uh, in, on the table before start. And Pep, what, what are the players asking you? There are a lot of questions and a lot of doubts from the physical fitness to when we will restart, if we do so. What is the concern of, of the players? What, are, what do they approach you about? Uh, well, of course, first they were concerned about the whole situation as it was starting to happen. Our club took, took a lot of measures early because our ownership is Chinese, so they, they, they really told us and forced us to take a lot of measures before the outbreak set up in Europe already. Uh, so we explained them clear uh, about the virus and about the situation and, and, and how to make the environment as 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 safe as possible, and I think we managed to do that, and and we avoid any contacts in 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 the players group, and uh, and of course they were a lot of talking about that. Afterwards, what they're talking now exactly the same as we're talking about now here. What's going to be when is going to be the next football game? When is going to be actually when is going to be the next training that we see ourselves together and we get back into grass? And that's that's a, a massive unknown. The first needs to be resolved. I do know that the leagues will understand that, that we, we will need that preparation of, of three weeks at least to be able to compete. Uh, so that's the first question they're talking. When are we going to be back? We made a planning according to what the EFL said that the next game is going to be after 30th of April. So we told them, all right, then, then we got we got to come three weeks before. But actually yesterday, with the lockdown in England, it's, it says that England is going to be locked down at least until the 30th of April which is just mean the day that we we're coming in and we were doing some tests before. So it's actually a new update. So it's basically that uncertainty that they are worried about. And and the players who are here with the family, they kind of know the situation and just get on with it. But then actually you have other players who are foreigners. They might be stuck in here in this country with the families abroad as well. They have the uncertainty as well on other areas. But I do I do have a lot of doubts as well that it's not going to be easy in a short time frame that we can guarantee safety for our players, safety for our staff, safety for the minimal people involved in a football game, because that will be a, a, a gathering of 50 people, at least, between players and staff for both teams and media-related people. That you're counting with a with the whole fan. So uh, I'm a little bit concerned on it's impossible to have a clear determination to think, oh, we got to be playing in May or we got to be playing in June, because... It's not going to be easy because no one knows how this situation will evolve. And we have countries ahead of us, uh, like Italy, for example, who, who the time frame is, is above of us, so in front of us. And it's not easy to know exactly when they will be able to come back because here in England, we're still not on that moment. I'm pretty sure it will come, but we're still not on that moment that Italy is. And Italy doesn't see the light in the end of the tunnel yet. And you hear those worries, Stuart, from your manager, I imagine, as well, similar situations. You also have to think, uh, you and the CEO will have to think about how to make the, uh, the club continue. Uh, so there is a financial implication to all of this, including the contract of the players. Some of them may be, uh, I'm not sure in your case, but uh, finishing the 30th of June, uh, the fact that uh, there will there'll be losses if there are games behind closed doors, etc. How you... Um, not saying preparing for it, but how are you studying the situation right now? Yeah, it occupies uh, most of our days, to be honest, because um, you're right, the, we're looking at all the different permutations. Um, 
um, we're fortunate, you know, we're, we're pretty well worn club and, and we cut our cough accordingly, but lots of clubs don't necessarily do that. And I'm pretty sure day to day they're, they're getting quite quickly concerned. Um, for sure, football, we're all going to lose a lot of money out of this, whatever the, the outcome is, whether we play the season or not. Um, it's about being prepared for that. It's about communicating that. It's about uh, the football world coming together to try and help each other out in this in this moment and uh, everyone being sensible, whether that's the players, staff, TV companies, the leagues, etc., um, and making sure that we uh, we work through it. But um, yeah, it's it's a for a club like ours, and we're fortunate we're in the Premier League. But it's still a huge concern for us because the numbers we could be in for losing um, are massive. And uh, and the you know the ramifications from that uh, can have knock-on effect for years uh, for football clubs, you know, and and ours would be no different to that. Uh, hopefully, ours would be better than a lot because of how it's run. But still, for sure, we don't have an owner who puts money in, um, so it'll have a real adverse effect. And uh, I think we've all got a duty to protect football, to make sure that football at the end of this is still there, still healthy. Um, and it will get back to the level that it will get back to, of course. But we've got to make sure we don't lose too many uh, clubs and, and people along the way because um, something like this could devastate certain clubs and we, we can't allow that. Clubs in uh, France, in, in Italy, in Spain, Barcelona themselves, they are talking actually about reducing the wages of, of the players. Uh, is that something you, you consider, Stuart? Well, we'd love to do that anyway. Um, <laughs> but... Um... <laughs> Lauren wouldn't like it when he played, but yeah, we'd love to do that. But no, I think um, I think until we know the outcome of what's going to happen, so the season continues, it does it behind closed doors, and then we have some real understanding of the the numbers that that clubs would lose. I think then it becomes a discussion. I think at the moment it's too early to ask a player uh, to give up his, some of his salary when at the moment I couldn't look him in the eye and say the reason we're doing this is because we will lose X. I think. Once we get to the point of understanding, um, you know, what the losses will be out of this, then again, I think it's it's for the f footballers and everyone to get together. And I think Bayern Munich have, have already done something today uh, around that, I read. Um, and to be honest, our players have, we've had them conversations where it's come from them as about, listen, we understand we might need to help through this. Uh, but I think at the moment, talking on behalf of our club, it's too early because we we don't know the outcome of the season yet. And I think once we know that and we start knowing the figures, it's 10 million, it's 5 million, it's 1 million, whatever it is, then we can have them discussions. Um, I don't think it should be used at this time as an opportunity just to try and kill players because they earn a lot of money and, and take money off them. I think there has that time may come, absolutely it may come for all of us, but I think when it does, it's it's got to be done in the right way and it's got to be a real reason for it. Uh, and hopefully that can strengthen the bond between players and clubs and, and people in football even further uh, to show that, no, actually when football needed to come together, it came together. You opened my eyes about many things. I want to ask you one last question to all of you. Uh, and I think we find in ourselves in a situation in which the, um, the first ones and the most affected are the vulnerable people around us, the, the older people, perhaps those with got uh, less means. And I wonder if football is given a, a little bit of a clean sheet. If we, We're not starting over, we, we're moving on, of course, but there'll be a point where we have had enough time to reflect. If you could change one thing when football comes back, what would that be? Uh, I think we got to learn one thing from this because possibly when we get back to work and back to trainings and back to games, possibly uh, it's got to be easier on a time frame that we can play closed doors better than that's got to be easier to do than play with whole fans in the situation that we are now. And then we got to learn exactly what we spoke, what everyone said here, the football only makes sense for them. So we got to learn that. But actually, uh, then they're, they're not being taken much into account in how clubs get organized or, or something. I remember as a, as I seen that in my country, before and you remember perfectly yeah, all the clubs were owned by the fans there were elections and they were coming and because of the of the crisis and then uh, the clubs had to get uh, into companies you know and now there's maybe only three clubs who really belong to the fans and i understand that's very difficult to do but but it doesn't make sense 
uh, to not taking them into account. It's important that we understand now that more than ever. And it's important that we are able to, in England, it's much better the system because the, the resources are more spread. Uh, but of course, the more we can spread the resources down, the more we understand that the football is for the fans. It's for the fans as well with the teams in the conference, for the fans as well, the teams in League Two and League One. And this is, this is a lesson that we got to learn out of this because it's got to be a lot of fans that could be a lot of clubs that could be wiped out because of that because of the of the of the lack of resources if we don't manage to finish the league or how the situation is after so possibly we'll need to get back to to those group of fans taking back clubs or these kind of things that we've seen as well we've seen it in Portsmouth and and unfortunately in Spain it's only three big clubs who are owned by the fans because they could you know so I think we need to get them back into as well the the structures of the clubs. Football back to the fans. Uh, that's that's two votes that you get from me. I think we're all going to change uh, on the back of this, and it'd be nice to have a little bit of what the four of you have have described. It's been a huge pleasure to have you all at the same time in the same place, not in the same place, but you know in the same online place, and uh, and discuss things uh, with the depth and interest uh, points of view that you have. So, Carlos, Pep, Stuart, Lau. Thank you very much and keep safe.